written by Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House is often regarded as the mother of all haunted houses and one of the pillars of horror literature. It is easy to see why. A psychological and disturbing story that ends in tragedy, it involves the reader with complex characters and atmosphere that seems to grow with each passing page. Not only did Jackson understand how hinting that something is watching you from the shadows can be scarier than actually showing it, she understood how to do so. And what do you do with a book like that? Well, the 1999 adaptation poisoned it, shredded it to pieces and saw the remains back together into a mockery of what it once was. And this is a nice way of putting it. Sadly, I can't just hand pages filled with I despise this movie to my superiors and call it a report. Trust me, I tried. Well, I'm Dr. Midnight, let's dissect The Haunting. We start by meeting your main character, Eleanor. Although she took care of her mother for 11 years, the old woman left the house to Eleanor's bitch of a sister who is now throwing her out. Familiar love at its best, ladies and gentlemen. Mother thought Lou would be much better equipped to deal with these unpleasant details than you. Unpleasant details? I've cooked, I've cleaned, I've mopped up her urine, you call that an unpleasant detail? Well, we barely start and I already want to claw someone's eyes out. This is supposed to be a Leonor? I don't know if you're a moron or just high, but either way, what the hell? We could use someone to help us with the cleaning and the cooking. Looking after Richie. Eleanor, help me. I gotta pee. <laughs> Two questions. Who cloned that Anakin kid and why do they hate humanity so much? Yes, this is Eleanor. No, you're not. Luckily for not Eleanor, but not for us, she's called to take part in a study about insomnia. I don't know why, this movie seems to be an excellent cure for that. However, it turns out that this is not quite the real objective. What is fear anyway? It's a series of automatic responses to a given stimulus. The only problem with fear is that it has largely become inappropriate and non-adaptive. But you can't conduct this research ethically or responsibly. Stop! This? This here? This is just one of the reasons why I find this movie to be more than just awful. It is insulting. Now, I understand that if you make an adaptation, it's bound to have some changes. I get that. But not when you change one of the most important aspects of the story like that. In the novel, the doctor wanted to study the haunted house and called people who had had paranormal experience at some point in their lives. It's what starts the plot, the reason why they all go to the place. It's a coherent and directed motivation and it makes sense. Meanwhile, this whole study under false pretense is a load of crap. Even the chairman just pointed out it's unethical and shouldn't be done but goes along anyway for no other reason than because the movie wants him to do so. Also, even ignoring this guy's idiotic reasoning for the experiment itself, studies on the subject of fear need consent due to the inherent possibility of harm, and they are done carefully, with precautions and safety measures, none of which you see here. When the motivation behind such crucial parts of the plot is so pathetic, the whole story falls apart because, from that point on, everything becomes weaker. It's bad enough that you fucked up Eleanor's whole character, now this? This is like saying Romeo and Juliet couldn't be together because they were half-siblings. After the points raised by the chairman on why this experiment shouldn't happen, the experiment starts, making this whole discussion even more useless. So Eleanor arrives at Casper's home, where she meets the caretakers. I'm Mr. Dudley, the caretaker. I'm also the caretaker of the old cliché abandoned hospital down the street, and I work at the cursed boarding school in the other town during the weekends. She also meets his wife, Mirs Dudley. I'd, I'd heard a sound, and that's... It's make the dinner or answer the door. Can't do both. She takes Eleanor to one of the rooms, passing by a portrait of Hugh Crane, the original owner of the mansion. Or maybe it's Dorian Gray, who knows? These are beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. That mask from Sansei would feel at home. You must love working here. Oh sure, I just love having to clean this huge house by myself while never being able to afford an apartment of my own. I'm living the dream here. We live in town. Nine miles, so there won't be anyone around if you need help. No one lives any nearer than town. No one will come any nearer than that. Yep, pleasant place. 
Soon the others arrive, such as Theo. Wait, Catherine is it a Jones in this movie? Were her bills too high or something? Why would she say yes to the scrap? Actually, this is something I want to ask all of the actors involved in this. You all deserve better than that. So there won't be anyone here if you need help. We couldn't even hear you. Bitch, those were my own lines in the movie. Anyway, after an extra dose of fun service for the melee audience, Tio and Nell get to know one another and decide to start exploring the house. You see, the children, they're reaching for heaven, but their souls are trapped in purgatory. You see? All ye who stand before these doors shall be judged. While hitting my face with a hammer and thinking it counts as foreshadowing. Uh, weren't we in a haunted house? When did it turn to the carnival from something wicked this way comes? I guess they fell into a different movie for a moment. Then got into a video game level. I can only imagine what the guys who had to build this place thought when they saw the plans for Joe's rooms. Let's go back. Gotta be through here. Ah! Oh. Luke Sanderson. Actually, none of you are who you're supposed to be. You, I'm gonna guess, are a get. Don't even start. Wow, you're so dominant. I think I would prefer if this guy was here searching for his dog. On mental porn film later, they meet with a dog. But in your application, you said you had trouble sleeping. Ever since I was little, I took care of my mother. She would bang with her cane on the wall. It was a relentless banging all through the night. But she's dead, I still hear it, and I wake up. Well, that killed the mood for dinner. Newsflash, but most people won't go into details, let alone in this way when talking about something like that with people they have known for less than a day. I've already given up on anyone here acting like a real human rather than a meat puppet, but how come you keep finding ways to disappoint me? Why are we here? Really, to answer the most basic question. Why haven't you fired your agents yet? After another useless yada yada about the fake insomnia experiment, the useless doctor tells them the history of the house. His name is Hugh Crane. But what he wanted, more than anything, was a house filled with the laughter of children. I'm starting to feel this guy should have appeared in an episode of To Catch a Predator. Basically, Crane married a woman named Renee, but they never had children. After Renee died, Crane became a recluse. But sometimes at night, they could hear sounds coming from the old house. The sounds of children. Christ, I need a drink. Get me one too, please. I think there's more to that story. I can feel it. It's in the wall. <laughs> they help the... Uh, the nameless assistant girl and she and the nameless assistant guy leave for the hospital. Because they already realized what sort of movie this is, they don't return. Hey, take me with you bastards! Miss Vance appears most susceptible to suggestive history. The experimental haunting fiction should manifest itself within the group. I know I'm nagging, but I'm still unsure of what he really means to accomplish here. I understand wanting to study fear and its reactions, but fear is subjective. Even if those people are easily influenced, there's a limit to that. Someone who doesn't believe in ghosts or haunted houses wouldn't be affected by this story unless he did something to try and break this resistance. And even in such an environment, this could take time. But he just talks on his recorder, takes some notes and walks around the house. He can't even simply ask Luke what he talked of his entry for the Midnight Society when they cross paths. I just, I couldn't sleep, I was just insomnia. Yeah. Interesting group, huh? Yeah, 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 it was good. Can I, I like Theo. It sucks that the interested in family part of the audience gets Katerina Zita Jones to do their phone service and the male interested have to contend themselves with Joe's too. Speaking of Eleanor and Theo, they do manage to fall asleep, but a loud noise takes care of that. So much for trying to cure your insomnia. <gasps> Strange, yes. Creepy, eh, not so much. All this is going on, and all I can think about is how ugly Joe's doors are. Theo, all I heard was you screaming, Luke, help me. I wasn't screaming for you. Oh, for the love of Cthulhu, she's not playing hard to get. Take a hint. Is that it? Is that what you heard? Just take a bath. I mean, it could have been. And then knock on the door, and the doorknob turn you with what, smartass? 
Look, even if the characters are dumb enough to accept anything, it doesn't mean we are. This isn't making me scream, leave your foes, you're all going to die! It's making me roll my eyes. Oh boy, I spoke too soon. Am I the only one distracted by how weird the shits look with CGI? Apparently, however, Leonor is just fine with being visited by a deformed eyeless ghost. Uh, honey, I don't think your problem is actually insomnia. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but even the house itself is a disappointment. Regardless of your interpretation, you know, whether there was something supernatural happening or if it was all in Leonor's mind, there's no denying that Jackson wrote the house in such a way that it wasn't only a scenario, but a character as well. The adaptation of 1963 did quite a good job with the atmosphere and have small details in the scenario that conveyed, at least, a sensation that approached what Jackson wrote. This place has nothing that sets it apart from other creepy houses or that gives it a sense of identity. It's excessively tacky and clustered and while it can feel suffocating, it's not in the sense you should be aiming for. How can you fail so much? These carvings are really creepy. It's like those Teletubbies, those things freak me out also. First and only thing you said that I can agree with. After Eleanor is left alone, she senses there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah, boo, I'm so scared, wow. Happy now? The others don't find anything in the fireplace. Hello, Santa! Except for a lion-faced flu, don't ask, but they discover someone left a little message. The caretakers are not going to be happy about this. Is this one of your sick jokes, Luke? What? I want to know right now, who wrote this? Did you write this, Theo? No, of course not! Oh, I sense I get fight coming up. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> I just like it. A fountain of a man taking a bet on his own spit. That's considered beautiful by humans? Well, at least Leonor is calm now. Actually, surprisingly so, considering how freaked out she was. I wanna know right now, who wrote this? Oh, Violet. You know, all my life I've been waiting for an adventure. Paintings are calling out to me. Strange noises in the night. Gosh, now that I think about it, I guess it was a charming little message. I suppose it beats another visit from the pillow ghost at least. I can be a victim or I can be a volunteer. I'm gonna be a volunteer. And either way you can end up as a corpse, your point? Excuse me, you are aware that her involvement in the house was meant to be disturbing, right? It wasn't meant to be this cute as diabetes in those insignia of a bimbo having a merry trip down whatever marshmallow road under a rainbow exists in her mind. Let's go by parts as Jack the Ripper would say. In the novel, Eleanor was sweet but also fragile and lonely, due to spending so many years in isolation while caring for an old and cruel woman who, through abuse, damaged her sense of self while also becoming the focal point of her existence. While Eleanor did confront her sister in the novel, for example, it was in a firm but quiet way. When she took the car and left, Something her sister and brother-in-law didn't want her to do. She spent a long time afraid that they would come after her. Almost like a teenager would feel rather than an adult. This whole thing is as far from the original character as possible. Oh, this woman is gentle and usually quiet, but there is nothing of the same vulnerability that Eleanor had due to her past. Because of that, the way the house affects her loses its impact. There are times when they try to convey at least something similar, but because it is inconstant, it comes off as, and I have no other term, her being a idiot. Her expressions don't help either. Would you stop making this Kirsten Stewart face, please and thank you? For someone who suffers from insomnia, she sure sleeps well, doesn't she? I guess she just wanted the free cash. The footprints lead her to Crane's study, where she finds records of the children who worked in his mills and that Crane killed it. It says a lot about this movie's inability to make me care when, even if I didn't know the book, I still won't be giving a damn. She tries to tell Till about it, but Till doesn't quite believe her. 
The blood led me to the bookcase. Are you on medication? Eleanor decides to listen to the ghost, but they aren't as informative as she expected. I don't know if I blame her for freaking out here. This ugly CGI must be a pain to wash out. Trying to find more evidence that she's not well on her way to Looney Island, she finds a scrapbook and finds out that Crane had a second wife, Carolyn. Who, in a few seconds, turns out to be a lot more helpful than the ghost children have been up until now. Say, instead of a weird, creepy welcome message, don't you think it would have been a little more useful to write bones in the fireplace? Okay, I'll let you out! You're doing half a job of not looking like you need a straight jacket. She reaches the door to the Gryffindor common room, but she doesn't know the password. Ugh. You know, this whole move is like a kid trying to scare you by screaming boo all the time. At first, it's pathetic but sort of cute. Then, it starts to get on your nerves. Now we're at the level where we want to pick the brat up and toss him through a window. He killed them. The children from the mills. He would never let them go, and I found the skulls, just like Carolyn did. Realizing that maybe there's a reason for all those pesk things like ethics and precaution measures, Dr. Merrill tells them the truth about the experiment. As you can imagine by now, it's of little help. You're participating in a study on group fear and hysteria. And you're just waiting for it to have a total nervous breakdown before you said anything? No, none of this is real. Oh, it is real. No, no, no. It's, it's I, not. I saw his wife hanging in the greenhouse. I know I saw it. Congratulations, Dumbass, you broke her. So, seeing Eleanor's current state, what do they do? They just leave her all by herself in her room. Oh, why stop there? Give her the book with the names of the dead children as well. I mean, you're already giving her the rope, might as well tie the knot for her. Yeah, yeah, she's all alone to the creepy evil ghost, poor thing, doesn't anyone even... Just so you know, just because something creeped you out in the ghost train when you were 5 years old, it doesn't mean you work in a movie. Ah, ah, ah. Who's holding my hand? You have got to be kidding. Look, I don't know if she means she was pulled by her hand or something, but I do know that in the novel, as well as in the adaptation from 1963, there was a moment when Eleanor was holding Teal's hand as they talked, only to realize, as soon as they turned the lights on, that Teal wasn't close enough for that. Here? Oh, just have her say the same line. That was what made the scene so scary, right? It's the same thing as the door scene from earlier, copying elements from the original story and just tossing them here and there without understanding the atmosphere, the timing or what exactly made them frightening. This is what gets me about this movie. It's not trying to be something inspired by the book, which would make major changes somewhat more acceptable in theory, kinda like in the TV series. It's following too much of the original material for that, but it does so with such obvious disrespect that it makes me sick. Just because the author is dead doesn't mean you can take her work and just do whatever you please with it. So all I can say is fuck off. She runs around like a headless chicken some more, having a strange vision of Carolyn being pregnant, I already know where this is going and I fucking hate you for it. As well as more of the Haunted Mansion rejects. Once again, seeing those damn things calms her down like a magic pill. You explain that one. And she ends up in a star case where the others find her. The children, they need me. Please. Please, trust me. You, great job at making people think you're not crazy. You, not the most trustworthy person in the room at the moment. You two shouldn't be getting things read for everyone to leave. The doc gets her to safety and despite everything that happened and how he claimed the experiment was off. Environment is proving entirely successful in promoting shared hysteria reactions. Yep, he actually still takes notes of what's going on. Even the house can't take this crap anymore. As for Eleanor, she's not doing so well either. What was that again to you? Somebody's gonna have to stay with her tonight, we can't leave her alone. The house fails again at killing Eleanor. Not sure why he treated when those guys came in since they won't be able to do much anyway. But here's an idea. 
Next time, try actually piercing her rather than just caging her like that. As they prepare to leave, we have a revelation that, oh, Dr. Meryl never called Eleanor. They gasp, I guess. How did you know the house wanted me? Why did you call and tell me to look for your ad? I didn't call you. Interesting that Joe's ghosts could impersonate the doc and get her to come to the house, but couldn't just say what she needed to do to actually help them. After a failed attempt to leave, and look now on Eleanor a new car, they realize Eleanor went back to the house. Well, it was nice knowing her. Uh, you okay there, girl? I'm home. Carolyn had her baby before she ran away. And the children, they wanted me to see this so I would know this was my home. Pardon? See, Carolyn was my great-great-grandmother. And the children are my family. He's still hunting them. But if I'm here, he can't harm them. Okay. We have a neurological problem here. You... You do realize that this house you're claiming to be your home sweet home just tried to fucking kill you, right? Also, I don't think this will make much of a difference in the long run unless you can prove what you're saying to the authorities. Also, if her mere presence is so damn powerful against the crane and the children are so helpless, how did he let them call her at the most convenient time possible in the first place? But if I'm here, he can't harm them. Okay, A, where did that come from? B, it doesn't mean he can hurt you and then what? And C, you're an idiot. God, I can't take this anymore. This has as much to do with the original material as Avatar, the cat in the hat and blood and chocolate. You didn't even know there was a book, did you? They tried to leave again, but you already wasted your chance, so too bad, so sad. Roll over. Get off the rug. Grab on something. Get out of there. Just two, three steps to the side. Or just stay there and die. There's some more running around, screaming, some statues coming to life, a la Harry Potter. Yeah, how was that again? But if I'm here, he can't harm them. Yeah, you're really doing a fantastic job preventing Grandpappy Crane from hurting anyone. Hell, if she can't stop this guy from hurting the living, what makes her think her mere presence can stop him from hurting other ghosts? Things finally culminate in a showdown between Eleanor and Crane. Oh, I can barely contain my excitement. The children need me, and I'm gonna set them free! It's about family! It's always been about family! My family, Grandpa! So, all that it took was for Eleanor to stand in front of the Deus Ex Machina doors from earlier while screaming one of the silliest and most generic species ever, relying on the power of love while actually doing nothing on her own to defeat a screaming boogey man with absolute zero personality? What the fuck is that? I really thought you could think no lower, but reducing the final moments of what was a psychological horror story into the most simplistic of all confrontations between good and evil is like spitting on the face of the holy audience, not only those who love the book. I said it once, I'll say it again. Fuck off! Yeah, yeah, so the souls are free, Eleanor is dead and goes to heaven with them, the evil evil man is defeated and no one fucking cares. Adaptations from books aren't always easy to make, and I understand that. I know there are many things to be considered, such as details and the time, and sometimes things have to be changed or left out. Also, there are psychological aspects that just can't be easily translated into a movie, if at all. While dissecting the haunting, I wonder why it infuriates me so much when there are so many bad adaptations that don't. Well, it's because this, somehow, feels like someone making absolutely no effort, having no respect for anyone and expecting to be praised for it. Many other adaptations are plain awful, no doubt, but they have a feeling that they are at least trying. This, however, is one of those that not only shreds the original material apart, but also seems proud of doing so, as if screaming that it can do all so much better. And you know what? Even if the book was a piece of crap and I hated it, I would still be furious because this is a matter of respect and principles. 
This is not your idea. Those are not your characters. This is not your story. Either make something of your own or learn to respect the original creation and the person behind it. And Dr. Midnight and... I hope our next session will be better.